We are back inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin for test number eight. We are past the halfway point of the 2023 Domo CrossFit Games. The men getting set to take the floor here. I'm Sean Woodland with Adrian Conway. We've got Mike Arsenal down on the competition floor. We were told we would be joined by Matt Fraser, but he has been delayed, so hopefully he will show up here in a little bit. But the business at hand, Tess up Raiden's intervals. That's right, it's intervals. It's two rounds of this. 21 box jump overs at 24 inches for these men. 15 calorie on the row, nine burpee box jump overs. They're gonna have a reset in six minutes, and then guess what? They're gonna repeat it, coming back the opposite way. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. What will you be watching for? Well, you gotta earn your rest. So you wanna think more speed. The faster you finish, the more time you're gonna get to recover. And then the trick is don't redline, run the race, but you gotta stay just under your full threshold. 10 men on the floor for this first of three heats. In lane number seven is Ant Haynes. He currently sits in 24th place overall. He got a backfill invite from the Asia semifinal. And for more on him, here's Mike Arsenault. That's right, Sean. Ain't wasn't even supposed, or Ant wasn't even supposed to be here on July 19th. That's when he got the call that he received the backfill. He had already tapered his training. He got a flight to Madison. He was going to be here anyway because he was coaching a Masters athlete. He was supposed to leave on Thursday to go to a wedding in Scotland. Instead, this is his wedding gift to his friend Ali, potentially a top 10 performance here on test number eight. Nick Matthew is hoping to get himself some points here in this test. Right now, 21st place overall. Again, we cut down to 20 athletes after tonight. And unfortunately, they did not let Nick, Nick cut down his shirt. That could be the lack of his superpower here in the Coliseum this year. Yeah. Heat number one is underway, and we start with the 21 box jump overs at 24 inches now for the men. Now we're gonna see several different styles on this box jump over here. The one standard is that the athletes do have to stabilize on the ground, then jump again. There's no touch and go box jumps allowed. Here, middle of your screen is Nick Matthew. Wants to get 21st place overall, trying to work his way inside the top 20 over these final two tests before that cut tonight. James Sprague and Nick Matthew will be the first two men in lower, along with Fabian Benito. That's right, and James Sprague makes short work of those jump, box jump over, staying very lateral the entire time. And I'll tell you what, Sean, even from what we saw previously from the women, it really pays off to row with a lot of power. We're the athletes that were able to make the most time up on this herd in each direction that seemed to favor uh, in the overall fastest time. There is Fabian Benito, who sits in 28th place overall with 239 points. He's got to make up some ground here in these final two tests to survive the final cut. Now Benito, bottom of your screen, moving on to the Nine burpee box jump overs at 48 inches. Can you get over however you want? You just can't fit, swing your feet out and around. That's right. There's going to be a lot of different forms here, even to get over this box. We saw some of the females earlier just crawling over. We saw some bounding over. Everyone's going to be using their hand because this box, again, to remind you guys watching, it is 48 inches, and that is not something that easily these guys can just get up and over without the use of their upper body, especially not considering all the work they've done with their lower body up to this point. Nine reps here, then it's back to the smaller box at 24 inches, the one that you see right there in the middle of your screen. On the right side is now Heinrich Hapalainen and Fabio Benito will be the first two men for those reps. Here come Nick Matthew and James Sprague towards the top of your screen. Elevate your athleticism and get 20% off standard or elite membership at wildhealth.com. Use the code CFGAMES. 90 total reps here. We're looking at Nick Matthew to the left, and of course James Sprague on the right here, again, remaining pretty laterally on his box jump. He hits, lands softly, and immediately steps down. The foot closest to the floor, no crossing over for James, and it's allowed him to make fast work of these reps. James Sprague in 23rd place overall. 291 total points. On another thing that was a key contributor to success in the, in the female side as we watched the next 
test was transitions are a big aspect of this. You can't just be focused on the movement again. You've got to get to the next movement in order to progress yourself towards the finish line as fast as possible. Top four on your screen on the far right is your leader in this heat right now, Fabian Benito. Next to him is Heinrich Kapolein. And then on the left side, the far left of the screen is James Bray. Currently sits in third place in this heat. And Nick Matthew is in fourth. Final 15 calorie row before the ninth final Brooklyn Brock jump orders at 48 inches to close out interval number one. Benito, the first one off to the Brippy box jump overs. And one thing to watch here again, too, is their descend to the floor. You can't just think about getting over the box. You've got to get your hands literally down to the ground, make contact with your chest as quickly as you can in order to start the next row. Xavier Benito. Looking to get across the finish line first here. His best finish in this competition came in the opening test in ride when he finished 13th. Sean, I'd be curious too, in the athlete's mind here, are they thinking forward to that six minute mark already? How bad am I suffering? How do I gauge this fatigue that's building? Do I really want to win by a couple seconds right now? Or do I want to put it in reservation so that I can finish strong on the back end? Heinrich Kapalainen is the first man across at 359.02 seconds. But Ant Haynes also got in ahead of Fabian Bonito. See Nick Matthew on a knee, a couple of the gentlemen also on a knee in the prone position. They're kneeling, they're trying to take in oxygen. There was a point in a lot of competitive history within sports where like, you were showing weakness if you bent over and put your hands on your knees. We started to understand that this is actually the position we can take in the most oxygen in that place. Every coach that ever yelled at me for that owes me an apology right now. <laughs> they owe you a big apology. So Heiner Kapolein in 359.02 seconds, and Haynes edges out. Fabian Benito by three tenths of a second, and it's Sprague and Parker rounding out the top five. Let's bring in Mike Arsenault. Just building on the, the rest uh, discussion there, guys. Adrian, question for you. So these athletes getting out over between 90 seconds and two minutes to rest before the second part of this test. Is there anything they can do other than just trying to get that heart rate back down to a more manageable level to attack the second part of this test at close to full capacity? There's, there's not really a lot that they can do, and, and that really is a great question, other than trying to find that prone position perhaps early in their recovery. What they want to do is then get to their feet, try to shake out the legs, move and process some of that lactate that is built in their lower bodies throughout the course of the last two and a half days, and then really try to get their mind focused on how they need to attack the back half of this test. Look at Jack Farlow. Trying to get his heart rate down. But it was Fabian Benito who led the way, but then Heinrich Appelrein and the man on the left side of your screen was able to reel him in on those final nine rookie box jump overs. He was very consistent, Sean. He made headway in all the transitions, not slowing at all. And then Appelrein just creeping in right there to take it. Appelrein was first, and Haynes was second in that interval by about two seconds. Now we go through this in reverse order. We start with the nine burpee box jump overs. And then after that, it's a 15 calorie row. And we're seeing urgency from all the athletes out the gate, of course. This is where they've only got the, the, the short set, the short amount of work. This is the nine repetitions as they progress forward into the 15. It's about the next set of nine box burpee box jump overs that we're, we're going to really start to see some separation in the final stretch. And Nick Matthew is off first. Followed by Hunter Kapalainen and James Sprague. Now here come Moritz Fiebig and Ann Haynes. Nick Matthew towards the middle of your screen in the blue shorts, no shirt on, in the yellow shoes. Now on the right side of the box on your left, the top three men on your screen. Nick Matthew right in the middle. Hunter Kapalainen on the right, James Sprague on the left. This row here right in the middle, this is where you kind of got to be willing to show a little bit of grit. Focus on the mechanics, driving with the legs as long as you can before you hand it off to the upper body so you can save a little bit of juice. Heiner Kapalainen, first man to the 21 box jump overs, followed by Nick Matthew, the Fabian Benito, and Jack Farlow are next. 
Molina using the low landing position on the box, not having to really rise and fall his center of mass. This is a great way and a great technique to really conserve some energy overall, especially when it comes to spiking your heart rate. You're staying low to the box. So it's a jump, but you're really not having to jump that high. There's Nick Matthew, who right now is on the wrong side of the final cut line, but only 11 points back of Sam Quatt. This is Matthew's second straight appearance here at the Crossing Kings. Last year, he finished 14th overall and had a test win in the skill speed medley. As Heinrich Kapalainen and Fabian Benito are on to their second and final set of nine Burby box jump overs, and James Sprague from the top of your screen and Nick Matthew are there as well. Jack Farlow closest to the screen. Working through his reps here. 90 total reps here, and it's Hapalainen who's through 51 and counting. Marlowe, one of the strongest athletes in the field, Sean, really doing a great job this year, showing his well-roundedness, his, his focus to build that aerobic engine. Again. Heinrich Abelainen is the first man into the rower. You may have noticed Jack Farlow, his feet were swinging outside, but they were still above the plate of the box, so that was okay. He's not shortening the movement there. Abelainen on the left, Fabio Benito is on the right. Now, Spray Matthew Barsaw Legowitz, too. Keep an eye on him. He's in good place right now, but that man's got some power in his big glove. Line and on the countdown, looks like he's got a bit of a lead. Got to be willing to get a little ugly here on these rows, folks. You try to think about getting that paddle right back to the monitor as fast as you can. I don't have a line in. Looking to go back to back here in these two intervals. His first time was 359.02 seconds. Here comes Fabian Bonito. James Sprague has moved himself into third place. And Jack Farlow now sits in fourth, followed by Bronislaw Legowitz. Eight reps remaining for Heinrich Apollina. And at this point, Sean, it just doesn't look like you can really close the gap. The fact that they're forced to step down and not rebound these jumps really dictates their ability to close the gap and pass people on this portion of the test. And it's going to be Heinrich Apollina who gets over. And he, had what, he may have had a rep remaining or had to get up on the finish pad. And now Fabian Benito is in. So we'll have to see what Apollonian's official time is. It looks like it counted four, 2.96 seconds as James Sprague is in. Jack Farlow going to be the next man, along with Bronislaw Alenkowitz. So Alenkowitz is now across, and so is Farlow. Nick Matthew also creeped in there. <laughs> David Shirunke, now Phoebig Haynes, and Parker are all done. So we will wait for the total times, but it does look like Heinrich Apollinen is going to have your top score here Woo! heading into heat number two. Great execution there by him. Very impressive. Only a three second difference between his first interval and his second. And that's the consistency that you hope for on a test like this, man. It's like not going out the game too hot, running your race, but not redlining a lot like we said for the rest of the success. And that's what that's what Hapalainen did. He was very consistent throughout. He was able to sneak by here on this first half, get himself just enough of a margin probably so he can have that advantage on the back half, knowing that he's playing with a little bit of house money. It's building a bank or an advantage for yourself. And then a lot of it can become psychological, getting to that big box first, knowing that you've got one or two reps ahead of the field. And then he was able to finish and stumble his way across the finish. Action continues here for the men as we have two heats to go in test number eight here on day number three of competition for the individuals at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Sean Woodham, the former affiliate cup champion, Adrian Conway, and we got Mike Arsenault down on the competition floor. Test number eight, work fast, recover faster. It's intervals. That's right, two intervals for time, Sean. It's two rounds of 21 box jump overs at 24 inches, 15 calorie row, and then nine burpee box jump overs at 48 inches. They're gonna get a couple minutes to rinse and repeat, and at the six minute mark, they're gonna turn around and repeat it all one more time. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. Anything changed for you after watching that first heat? Oh man, it's more the same. 
more speed is more rest. You've got to know the pace that you can come out to allow yourself the time to recover before that six minutes. But also, you can't give too much too soon. You've got to stay under the red line throughout the execution of this test. Ten men on the competition floor here, and in lane ten, that's the guy with the target on its back. That's Sam Quatt. He currently sits in 20th place overall. He will be the last man to survive the final cut here. And he has been slowly creeping his way up the overall leaderboard. He took a big dip after test number one, but has been inching his way up since test number four. And currently sits in 20th place overall. He's only 11 points up on Nick Matthew, who we saw in that prior heat for 20th place. Sam's advantage right here is that he knows that time that he needs to beat to go get some points on Nick. And Nick Matthews' total time was 839.49 seconds. The top time belongs to Heinrich Capelina at 801.98. And this is where, again, we're going to see athletes have different forms of execution on these box jump overs, a slight pivot on each rep. Some will stay completely lateral to the box, but one thing we know for certain is there's no touch and go box jumps allowed. They've got to settle both feet on the floor before they go over to the next rep. Noah Olson is just about done with his first set, and Olson will be the first ball on San Juan to the lower, and everybody else is close behind him. The San Juan right now is in last place in this heat. He'll be the last man to the rower. He's at the bottom of your screen in the white shorts. Now we have 15 calories to complete on the rower. Sean, I gotta ask you a question. Does it surprise you that Noel Olson was the first one to the rower? No, no, not at all. Uh, this man notoriously, folks, leads the way, leads the charge early in workouts. And we'll see what happens here. It being a shorter format with rest in the middle, this could play out well for Noah, but we've got to make sure he doesn't come out too hot. He likes the toe and flirt with that red line. Yoni Koski in the middle of your screen now, first man to the nine. Burpee box jump overs at 48 inches. Here comes Justin Medeiros, the former defending, I should say, two-time champion, but 15th place overall coming into this test. And people have asked me all weekend long, what's been the biggest surprise? It's been the man on the right side of your screen just has not looked like himself. Yeah, I like how that I've gotten to spend some time even in the back and the overall attitude and demeanor of the, of the team back there is just kind of doing what they can to, to get by. And of course, early on, they knew they were going to have some work to do to dig him out of the hole. Yonikoski has almost reached the halfway point of this first interval. 90 total reps here. Yonikoski moving ahead to his 21 box jump overs. And Koski looking smooth and composed. The one thing we know about Yon is that he's got an amazing engine. He has the ability to go. And in a test like this where we're moving from one side of the floor to the other, it's literally like a race, a lot like on a bike or a lot like a 5K. He can dictate his pace, lead the way, and do just enough work to gather the points he's looking for. Colton Mertens, who's the fourth man from the top of your screen, he's in the now in right in the middle. He's in fourth place. Colton is the shortest guy out there, and keeping pace here with the leaders after those nine burpee box jump overs. No yielding from Colton Mertens ever. The young coach, he continues to lead. He's into the row for the second and final time on his opening interval. 15 more calories to complete here. Dallin Pepper is the next man to the rower. Now, Sam Quan's made up a lot of ground. He's moved up into third along with Mertens and Medeiros towards the top of your screen. This is where that self-awareness has to kick in for these athletes, understanding that if they do have to persevere into the latter part of this test. It's going to be a short turnaround. So how much do you push here is the question. Do you want to be first to the halfway mark, or do you want to be first on the way back overall? Yonikoski is now through 81 of the 90 scored repetitions, and he has moved on to his final nine burpee box jump overs. And here comes Dallin Pepper behind him. Pepper solidly in second place. Sam Quatt now has moved into third. He separated himself a little bit from Mertens and Medeiros. Now Medeiros is out, top of the in the dark shorts, and here comes Colton Mertens. Wants to make the fast work of these Burby Box jump overs here again. He does a great job of really getting his chest to the ground immediately. Feet make contact, chest to the deck immediately allows him to begin that next rep. And Yoda Koski is in, and he's going to beat Heinrich Hapalainen's top time from heat number one. But Dallin Pepper will be the next man in. Sam Quant, your leader on the floor, he has one final rep to go. There's Colt Mertens, who may have beaten, and I think he did. Sam Quant across the finish. 
Less than a second between the two of them, and Noah Olsen decided to leap his nameplate as he ran through the finish. And that leaves Sam Cornwaye as the last man to finish. Interval number one. We'll have a reset here. We'll start at six minutes. Remember your scores, your total times. Yoda Kozki at 348.16 seconds. The fastest time we've seen. Here's the close finish. Colton Mertens got across. For more on Colton Mertens, let's go down to Mike Arsenal. Well, after Colton won test number five yesterday in my interview with him, he mentioned that he was diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder. Got some more context from him. Back in January, he was suffering from some vision pain and also some nerve issues. He was actually in hospital for five days and he was diagnosed with MOG antibody disease. And it's a disease that can cause inflammation and damage in the optic nerve, the spinal cord, and also your brain stem. So he's made some changes because it can be uh, caused by significant uh, stress and not getting enough rest and recovery. And Colton works by day on a farm, trains at night. So he significantly reduced his training volume to get better sleep. Good news is he hasn't had a flare up since January, but one could occur at any time if he doesn't keep his rest and sleep under control. So far, so good here at the 2023 CrossFit Games. And great to see Colton Murray's out here competing. He's a fan favorite. He currently sits in 13th place overall. The fans are seeing him up on the big screen, and that's what they are reacting to. Fan favorite, man. He's kind of like Mighty Mouse out there on the competition floor. How can you not root for it? It's the natural underdog. Here you are, your top five times from the opening interval. Yonikoski, 348. To lead the way there. Now we go on the way back. Second and final interval here for heat number two. Top time, total time, belongs to Hydro Capilano at 801.98 seconds. And although it's the same test going back the opposite direction, switching up the order significantly changes the way your body responds to this thing, Sean. Getting up and over this 48-inch box to begin with, it allows this part to happen much faster, but then the latter portion of the test gets that much nastier because we're actually progressing to end with the faster box jump overs, and that's, that's a lot nastier when you're, when you're a little bit more tight. Yoda Koski and Will Moore had the first two men done with those nine burpee box jump overs, and they are both onto the rower along with the rest of the heat for those first 15 calories. Sam Quatt closes to the screen. That's right, notice the way he's taking in oxygen, that deep breath as he recovers and reaches towards the rower there every time. Currently he would be the last man in and the final cut that's gonna be made after test number nine tonight, the Olympic total. They're looking to give himself some breathing room as far as the cut line is concerned. Well, Yonikoski is your leader, followed by Dallin Pepper and Quant. Most of these gentlemen using that same technique that we see from Koski here, almost clearing the box as they jump over, getting that outside leg as close as possible so they transition right to the ground. Dallin Pepper right side of your screen trying to get Sam Kwan for second place here. Will Morad is actually into the headband. Morad sits in fourth. There is Sam Kwan. Sam Kwan, the silent assassin. Kwan is a guy who's finished inside the top five. The last two times he's competed at the Cross of Games, he was fourth in 2022 and second in 2020. You can almost see from the way he's moving through the reps. Yona continues to be smooth, but it's almost like Quan is literally building his intensity, and you can see in the way he's just throwing his body over the box. Well, the 54 rep mark. Yona Koski will be done with those nine burpee boxer bowlers, and he'll come right at you and get himself into the row. 50 more calories for Koski, who won the opening test here at the 2023 Noble Cross of Games. It's the third time in his career he's won the very first test of the games. And you can see it there, Sean. It's, it's, it's the universal pain face, right? It's kind of the, the, the grimace and bear. You've got to drive through your legs, continue to pull through your upper body, and just hope and pray that you're getting close to one calorie per stroke as much as you can so you can get off this thing as quickly as possible. 
Oh, it's a party on the road. This is going to be close. Transitions matter here. Yolkoti uh, is your leader. Now here come Pepper and Quant. The 21 reps here. And now Will Morad advances to the box show bowlers. The four men on these final 21 reps. Now, Justin Medeiros is still trying to get himself off the road. The defended two-time fittest man on earth who currently sits in 15th place overall. And now Medeiros has gotten himself to the box show bowlers. He's on the far left side of your screen. You can just see him moving in and out of view. Yoda Kosi is just about done here. He's got now two reps left. Kosky's done. So Yoda Kosky, sub four each time. Dallin Pepper and Sam Quan came in just behind him. And now here's Will Morad. Heinrich Kapalainen had the prior top time at 801.98 seconds. And I believe the top three in this heat may have beaten that, but we'll have to wait for the final scores as Medeiros gets himself across. He'll take sixth place in the heat. Oldest Uthniks and Mertens is now in. That, that, that leaves Sam Corwaye, the last man to finish here. Tough spot to be in, but not a better place to be in at Sean. The community always getting behind everybody, pushing them along to the finish line. Got through these final reps. <laughs> so that'll be the final rep for Sam Cornwell. Right? Uh, he will come across the finish line. He's got to get his timing chip up there. He's got to get up on the, the finish man for his time to count. You heard the crowd reacting. And, and that right, that right there surmises that experience for, for this test for that young man. He, he was in a pain cave. They call it lizard brain when you get out there and you get too tired and you just got to get yourself across the finish line. But no one did it better as far as getting himself across the finish line. Is concerned than Yonikowski. Yonikowski put on a clinic for pacing and threshold work here. I guarantee he's doing a lot of intervals in his training. Um, he was very proficient in getting over the high burpee box jump overs. And then on the road, he was willing to dig and settle in to that discomfort. And you couldn't catch him by the time he got to the box jump overs. And that was it. Great execution there by Yonikowski. Two heats down. Final heat coming up next here. We are down to the third and final heat for the men in test number eight here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center, everybody, and we are glad you were with us. I'm Sean Woodland with former Affiliate Cup champion Adrian Conway, and we have Mike Arsenault, who is down on the competition floor. Your overall standings after test number seven, it's Roman Krennikov, who still has a sizable lead over Jeffrey Adler, but Adler was able to carve Four points off of that in the last test, but still has a ton of work to do. Chandler Smith is hanging on to third, and it's Jay Crouch in fourth place, just two points up on Brent Fakowski. Test number eight is intervals. That's right, and it's two of them, Sean. They're gonna do two rounds of 21 box jump overs at 24 inches, 15 calories on the row, and nine burpee box jump overs, but this time on a 48 inch box. They're gonna rinse and repeat, and at the six minute mark, they're gonna head back the opposite direction one more time through. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. More speed is more rest here. The faster you complete the work, no matter what, everyone's starting at the six minute mark, so you wanna get there and get settled. But you can't run too fast. You don't wanna be at the top of your threshold at the red line, otherwise, you're gonna be slower on the way back home. 10 men out on the competition floor for this the third and final heat. And in lane at number seven is Jay Crouch. Mentioned him, he comes in in fourth place overall. That's a bit of a surprise. Not many people saw that coming. And for more on him, here's Mike Arsenault. Well, thanks, Sean. This is Jay's best performance at the CrossFit Games thus far in his decade-long career. The reason, according to his team, that he's finally putting the hard work necessary to be commensurate, not just with his abilities, but with the difference of getting to the CrossFit Games and being competitive at the CrossFit Games. Jay attributed it, attributes it to an increase in maturity. We'll see if he can continue his march to the podium here in test number eight. The Bailey Martin out of New Zealand. Another 
Pleasant surprise here. Tenth overall after seven tests. He's a former teenage competitor as well. He was here in 2017 when he finished 13th in the 16 to 17 year old division. Not bad yeah. to come out on your first appearance as an Indy and be sitting in this situation. Third and final heat is underway. Yonakowski has the top time at 7 minutes 45.38 seconds. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say these boys, they're all gunning for that time in this heat. And the thing that we're noticing already out the gate is these box jump overs are going to play a role here. There's not a lot of work and passing that you can do here, but it's a great pace setter. None of these athletes are allowed to rebound this box jump over, so we're all seeing them step down. Some turning and pivoting and some staying parallel the whole time. Six minutes is the time cap here. We just saw a bit of confusion there on Roman's behalf. It looked like he miscounted, started to go to his rower, had to go back to the box and do one more jump. The timing is presented by G-Shock, the official watch of the Noble Cross and Games. There is Roman Krennikov, who's going to have no problem on the rower. Lazar Jukic is your leader right now. At the 36 rep mark, he will move from the rower onto the nine burpee box jump overs at 48 inches. And there goes Lazar, who comes in in ninth place overall with 421 points. And now Roman Krennikov is moving forward along with Pat Felder and Jeffrey Adler. And then Bailey Martin at the bottom of your screen. So all the men now on to the Burby box jump overs. Chandler Smith, who's in third place overall, was the last man to get to these nine reps. Sean, this heat is so stacked, and this test is so simple by design in regards to just doing work and doing it quickly that it's so hard to, to pick a front runner or someone naturally inclined to have an advantage here. This is literally going to be a slugfest all the way through the finish line. Well, Pat Valer was able to move himself in the first. Roman Krennikov ran past the box and got himself on the roller, and everybody in this building is waving him back, and that is a big mistake for Krennikov. Myself included, Sean, I'm literally like waving as if he's going to see me or hear me. I, it's, it's crazy to see him go just past that. It's going to cost him seconds, but I think he can recover. Now, the good news for Roman is he has such a huge lead that he doesn't have to do a ton of damage control here, but Jeffrey Abbott, who's on the left side of your screen, sits in second place, and he's been trying to just chip points off of Roman's lead here. The Felder is your leader in this heat, and he is now back to the roller. So one more look at it on the right side. Roman Krennikov runs right to the roller, and he had to get to the box of rollers, and the judge calls it back. But in a test where every second matters, that could be huge for our overall leader. And it, and it will affect him for, for a little bit, Sean, in his mind. Even as he's executing right now, you got to wonder, does it build urgency? Is he going to pre-fatigue himself now on the earth? You had a great point, though. He's got quite the buffer, so he's allowed to settle mentally in that situation, understand. Uh, he, he's, he's, in a, he's in a better situation than most. There's our leader right now, the Heat, Pat Valor, eighth place overall, and he is back to the Burpee Box Jump Overs. Pat Felder has four sixths and two twenty sevens, and then he finished tenth earlier this morning in the five k. And we know Pat can be good for some up and, and down throughout the course of a, of a week or a weekend. But right now he's making slight work of these burpee box jump overs, looking very smooth. Getting one foot on top, kicking that other leg all the way through, almost sliding across the box. Felder only has that one rep remaining, and he will demolish Jonakowski's top ties. So and Felder is in. 336.41 seconds. And Bailey Martin at the bottom of your screen is fighting with Grover Carl Gubitz and Brett Fikowski. This is going to be a close finish between the three of them. And Gubitzin and Martin got across at about the same time. Gubitzin edges his head out by two tenths of a second. Fikowski's in. Adler is in. Jukic and Krennikov, Hosta, Smith, and now Crouch are done. But it's Pat Velder at 336.41 seconds, about 12 seconds faster than Yonakowski's prior time. But Roman Krennikov had two big mistakes here in this heat. And, it, and it's hard in a test that goes by so fast. You've got to certainly be focused not just where you're at, but also where you're going. And he just bypasses the box straight in the middle there, has a seat on the roller, probably thinking, wow, I'm in a good spot. No, Roman, you're in the wrong spot. Got to go back and get that work done. There's a bit of a language barrier with Roman, so he may not have known that he had one more rep to go. Now we will re 
reset and work our way back down the floor. So three of the top five spots occupied by Canadian athletes. Jorben Carl Gubinson, who we do not talk about enough, how consistent he is. There he is in second place. This is his 10th straight trip to the CrossFit Games. His rookie year was in 2014. After that, he has never finished lower than ninth at the CrossFit Games. It's an amazing resume again, Sean, like you mentioned. We don't, we don't talk about him enough. But he's, he's one of those men that shows up, does the work, doesn't bring a lot of external attention to himself. He's one of the best that would do it. Pat, get that crowd ready. Pat Belder is going to attack this thing with an attitude here. There's Roman Krennikov trying to make up for some mistakes he made in Heat 1. We are ready to start the second and final interval for Heat number three for the men, and it's Patrick Vellner who has your top time after heat number one at 336.41 seconds. And for folks that are wondering, man, I thought Roman would be in the top five of this opening portion of this test here. Well, he made a couple errors on that first half, and it costs a precious time in which he's trying to make up for. We wonder, will these errors be the one that take him out of the top ten for his first time in the course of this week at the CrossFit Games here in 2023? Nine reps here on this 48-inch box. The athletes just can get over it however they want. They just cannot swing their feet around the box. And Felder is the first man back to the lower fall by Brett Fikowski and Bill Carl Gumitson and Lazar Jukic at the top of your screen. And then in the bottom of the screen, it was Bailey Martin who got there as well. So now 15 calories here. Patrick Belder, who has a history of digging himself an early hole here at the CrossFit Games, did it again in the opening test when he finished 27. There's Brett Fikowski, who currently sits in fifth place overall. We can relate to that look, Sean. I've been there. You've been there. Everybody that's doing CrossFit at home has been there. you got to persevere and keep pushing. This is a nasty test, especially on the back half. Keep driving with the legs, keep pulling with the arms. Looks like Belder. running a 400. Belder showing us more of the same. Patrick Belder continues to lead here. The top combined time from the two intervals belongs to Yonikoski at 7.45.38 seconds. Now, Roman Krennikov is the last man to the box jump overs here. The man on the right side with no shirt on is Jeff Adler. He sits in second place. He has a 96-point deficit to make up on Krennikov for the top spot in the overall standings. If you win a test, you get 100 points. Second place is worth 96, and so forth. So far and so forth, as you work your way down the standings, is Pat Velder continues to attack this test. He is in the lead here on the way back down the floor. Here come Bailey Martin and Lazar Jukic. Velder's got nine reps here, then back to the rower on the left side of your screen for 15 more calories. Sean, it's interesting. I liken this test to something like running 800 meter per time, having a two minute reset period to run another 800 meter per time. And Pat Velder is very comfortable being uncomfortable, and he's shown us right now in this test. Final rep for Pat Velder. He'll be the first man to his second and final 15 calories. Lazar Jukic currently sits in second place. Ninth place overall for Lazar. He's got now two reps remaining on his set of nine. And Pat Velder is leaving everybody behind him here. Wow, what a buffer. Crouch making his way to the roller. Jake Crouch making up some ground here. Bailey Martin is in along with Jukic and Jorgen Carl Gubitz on top of your screen in the blue shorts. Now Chandler Smith is done, and our overall leader, Roman Krennikov, is towards the back. He is in last place now in this heat, so the door is open for Jeff Adler to carve some more points off of that lead. And here comes Roman. Now Pat Velner is off the road. 21 reps here for Velner. He's got to go up and over. The power that he pulls on those, those, those roller handles with and the efficiency of his dirty box jump has, has earned him this opportunity. He's so good moments just like this where he knows he's about to take one home. Jay Crouch on the left side of your screen, the man who comes in in fourth place overall out of Australia was the second athlete to the box jump holders. Robert Krennikov in the background, you can see him in the red shorts still on the roller. The Pat Vellner, the crowd comes to his feet, is getting set to win this test. Vellner!
is done, and Pat Felder is going to stroll across the finish line and put 100 points in his pocket. Pat loves those moments in the Coliseum. Bailey Martin is in. Now here comes Jay Crouch as well. Jukic and Kubitz on top of your screen. And now Jeffrey Adler is across. Along with Yella Hosta, that leaves Brett Fakowski and overall leader Roman Krennikov out on the floor. And we still have 20 times from the prior heat that are going to factor in here. So Jeff Adler is going to take a big bite out of Krennikov's lead. As Fakowski is in, Krennikov has one rep remaining, and he is across. Roman Krennikov has not made a mistake so far in this competition until this test. And it's going to cost him. It is going to cost him, and that's why we play the game, Sean. Naturally, if I looked at it, do I pick Bellin to be one of the top finishers? You know it. But guess also was have been right beside him as Roman Krennikov, and some mental errors cost him that. Let's take a look at Pat Bellner on the way back here. A lot like he started, he made smooth and fast work of the Burby Box jump overs, getting one leg on, kicking the other leg through. It's like a slide across, almost like a safe at home plate. But it's his power on the rower and consistency on the box jump overs that allowed him to just stroll right across that Belner swagger into another test win for him. Put another notch on the belt for his career. Seventh career test win for Pat Velner, 344.95 seconds in that final interval. Beats Yonagosi's combined time of 745.38 seconds. And Pat Velder is with Mike Arsenault. Pat, I think we have the same conversation each and every year. You have a slow start to begin the competition. You come into the Coliseum on Saturday and lay the smack down to get yourself closer to the podium. How important is your veteran status, all the experience that you have in managing the highs and lows of a competition? I think it makes a big difference just knowing and having the experience that it's a long weekend and you can climb back out of a hole. And, you know, I've unfortunately made a bit of a habit of it. It takes me a few days to get rolling now that I'm getting a little older, but once the young guys start feeling sore, that's where I thrive, you know? That's how I live every day. So, you know, I got more experience than them in that respect. Well, the young guys also have a little bit better recovery time. So how has your recovery changed as you've gotten older and had more experience here at the CrossFit Games? I mean, the CrossFit Games recovery is a bit of a myth almost like, Nobody's fully recovering any time, but it's just, it's eating, sleeping, it's doing all the things I was telling my wife this morning. Saturday, it starts to be tough to eat, you know? Been shoveling it in my face, whether I want it or not, for the last two days. And on Saturday and on Sunday, that's where it pays off. Well, so. moving day today, and you're moving closer to the podium. Pat, congratulations. Thank you very much. Hope to see you here again soon.